Hi and welcome to Real Estate Financial Modeling's HP 12C Calculator Skills for Real Estate webinar. A quick word on Real Estate Financial Modeling. We provide all of the products and services you see here. Please visit us at getrafm.com and take a look at the top of the website for rotating promotions every month. Along with this training, we do offer a skills certification, which is available online through a test, 24-7-365. The test is only $29, and it's simply 15 questions, and should take around 30 minutes, so it's something you could do over lunch. You'll get your results instantly, and something you can put on your resume. We note that the test does cover a few additional advanced topics that we will not discuss on the webinar, so make sure that you take advantage of our free self-study guide, um, which I will point you to at the end of the webinar, which is available for download. Quick overview on the HP 12C. This calculator has been the market standard in finance and real estate since around 1981. With respect to its design, its physical design, most of the keys are multifunction keys and they have color coding associated with them. So what we do in the slides and in the guide is we will always color code as applicable. Uh, in the case of keys that are white, we'll use black text since we have a white background here. Orange will be associated with orange keys and blue with blue keys. There is somewhat of a reverse keying order used, which can be a little bit strange or confusing at first. We will walk you through that and something that you just get used to over time. Lastly, there will be some values that are going to show up on your calculator as negative values that might seem a little bit confusing because typically we'll think about these things as positive dollar amounts. So just to be aware of that, and that's just a quirk of how the calculator presents certain results. Today's agenda is as we see here. We'll talk about financial registers, the two types of interest, periodic and annual interest rates, nominal and effective interest rates, PV and FV, present value, future value, NPV, net present value, internal rate of return, loan APR, and mortgage pricing. This is a terrific printout that you can take advantage of. Most commonly used keys for real estate. This spells it all out here, so something you can print and keep handy, and we will naturally be using all of these keys over the course of today's lesson. There is, as we mentioned, a color-coded formatting that's used in our materials, both the slides and in the self-study guide. Values that are in bold black type within brackets, these refer to the white default key values, such as we see above, where the N is in white on the key. That is the default value of the key. The F function is orange, and that will refer to the orange values associated with each key. So, for instance, the NPV key would be the PV key that is in the middle there, top middle. After you hit the F key, it will apply the NPV function as this key as opposed to the default value. And similarly, the blue keys relate to the blue values that sit on the keys. First topic today is financial registers. These are dedicated places in the calculator's memory where we can store data values for use in an ongoing calculation. And these financial registers are a subset of what are known as the calculator's overall storage registers. An application is to recall particular values during lengthy calculations. Let's take a look at how to do this. To store a number into a financial register, we're going to key the number into the display and then press the key for the corresponding variable, such as N, 
for number of periods, I for interest rate, and so on. To recall a stored register value, we will select the RCL key, which is recall, followed by the corresponding variable that we wish to recall. And to clear all of the financial registers in one fell swoop, we will hit the orange F key and then the orange register key, REG. Simple interest on either a 360 or 365 day basis. This is interest that's calculated in each period off of the beginning of period account balance, where the account balance does not include any prior interest earned. And we note that the default for the HP-12C is calculation of interest on a 360-day basis. Naturally, the application is to calculate how much interest is being earned by a lender over a specified period of time. To calculate simple interest, we will do the following in the following order. First, enter the number of days to be used and press N. Then enter the annual interest rate and press I. Next, enter the principal amount borrowed and then press CHS, which stands for change sign, and PV. Then press the orange F and orange I and T key to calculate and display the interest that's accrued on a 360-day basis. Okay, if we would like to see the interest value on a 365-day basis instead, we press the R key with the down arrow and the X not equal to Y key. Okay, and lastly, if we want to see the total, the sum of the principal and the accrued, we can finally press the plus key. Okay, let's do an example together. So go ahead and pull out your calculator if you don't have it ready. And here is the context. Okay, we have a $1,000 loan taken out for 90 days at 9% simple interest. Okay, the interest is calculated on a 360-day basis. The question is, what is the amount of interest that is accrued over 90 days? And lastly, how much is owed in total after 90 days? Okay, so the number of days here is 90, so the first step is to type in 90 and then the N key. 9% is our interest rate, so we type in 9 and I. The amount borrowed is 1,000, so key in 1,000. Then CHS for change sign, and then PV. This sets the present value of the principal amount borrowed at $1,000. And next, the orange F key and orange I and T, and that will tell us that the interest accrued over 90 days at 9% annually is $22.50. Lastly, if we hit the plus key, it will then add that $22.50 to the $1,000 amount, and that will tell us the total amount owed, $1,022.50. That's simple interest. Compound interest is slightly different. It's interest that's calculated in each period, again, off of the beginning of period account balance, but in this case, the account balance does include any unpaid interest earned over time, cumulatively. And naturally, the application here is to understand how much interest is being earned by a lender or owed by a borrower over a specific time period where interest will compound at some stated interval, either monthly quarterly, or annually, typically. We do this calculation using monthly periods as an example as follows. First, we'll enter the number of years, and then press the blue G and blue 12X key. And this will enter the total number of compounding periods into the N register. Then, we calculate and store the monthly interest rate by entering that annual interest rate and pressing G and 12 divide. And this will automatically enter the monthly interest rate into the I register. To calculate the number of payments or compounding periods required to pay off a loan, first thing we want to do is clear the financial registers. So we'll hit the orange F and orange FIN key. 
Next, we'll enter the periodic interest rate with either I or G12 divide. And then we'll enter at a minimum two of the following metrics, either the present value, the payment amount, okay, and we note that if we do enter a payment amount, we need to specify whether that payment stream occurs at the beginning or the end of each period, and we do so using the blue keys as described. And the third option is to enter the future value. We'll then press N to calculate the number of payments or periods. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. An investor takes a loan of $150,000 at 10% annual interest, which is compounded monthly. Okay, and they take this loan to buy a rental property. If they make payments at the end of each month of $1,500, how many payments are necessary to pay off the loan and how many years will that comprise? Okay, so the first thing we do, again, clear the registers, the orange F and FIN keys. Then we do 10, which is the annual rate, and then G12 divide. And this will calculate and store the monthly rate. Next, we enter the principal amount borrowed, 150,000 PV. And since we know the payment amount, we will enter in 1,500, CHS for change sign, and then PMT for payment, and specify that those payments are occurring at the end of each month. So we hit the G key and the G blue end key, and then lastly, hit the N key. And this is going to tell us that at $1,500 a month, Okay, it'll take 216 payments to pay down the loan. If we want to know the number of years that that is equivalent to, we simply, with the 216 remaining on the screen, enter in 12 and then the, the divide key, and this will tell us that at that rate it would take us 18 years to pay off the loan. Second example is a balloon payment. Okay, so let's say that instead of 216 full payments being needed to pay off the loan, there were instead 215 full payments plus some partial 216th payment. That was the, a fraction of the full payment amount. Okay, so the question is, what's the final balloon payment, which in this case would be payment number 215, which again is going to include some partial amount that would have been payment 216. And so we enter in 215 and then N, then we hit the FE key and this is going to give us the remaining balance after 215 full payments were made, which is 1347. We hit the recall button and the payment button and then the plus key. And so this is going to tell us that that 215th payment would be a total of 2,847, which is the constant $1,500 typical monthly payment plus that additional 1,347. Next topic is periodic and annual interest rates. These are the rates of interest on a loan expressed in a particular interval, okay, either annual rate or monthly. We can apply this concept to backsolve for what interest rate is needed given a certain frequency of compounding to produce a future value of a given investment amount. So let's take a look at how we do this. Again, let's clear the financial registers with F fin, enter in the number of payments either with N or G12X if it's monthly. And then again, we will enter at a minimum two of the following metrics, either the present value, the payment amount, again specifying the nature of the payments, timing either beginning or end of the period, or the future value. We then press I to calculate the periodic interest rate. And to generate the annual interest rate, we enter the number of periods per year, such as 12 if it's monthly, and then press the multiplication key. 
Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so to accumulate $10,000 over six years on an investment of $7,000, what is the annual interest rate that we would need if compounding is occurring quarterly? Okay, so we invest $7,000 and we want to grow that $7,000 to a total of $10,000 over six years. What's the interest rate that we need in order to have that level of growth in that period of time? Again, assuming that compounding occurs quarterly. We hit F fin to clear registers. Next, we type in 6 and then the Enter key and then 4 and the multiplication key and then N. Okay, so this is going to tell us there are 24 total periods of compounding, again, because it's quarterly, so 4 times per year times 6 years. Next, enter in the investment amount, $7,000, change sign and PV. This specifies the investment as negative 7000 And then the future value, which we're seeking, is the targeted $10,000 amount. So we type in 10000 and then FV. When we hit the I key next, it will tell us the quarterly interest rate. And so if we want to know the annual interest rate, we simply type in 4 and then multiplication, and this will tell us that the interest rate is just under 6% annually. That is what is required to grow the 7,000 to a total of 10,000 over six years. Nominal rates and effective rates are the next topic. The nominal rate is the annual interest rate in name, such as when somebody says there's an 8% annual interest rate. We know, however, that when interest compounds, the nominal rate will be less than the effective rate. We'll make a point of applying these concepts when we want to find out what is the annual interest rate that one is really paying on a compounding loan. So to convert the nominal interest rate to the effective annual interest rate, let's go ahead and set the mode of interest payment first by typing in G end and then F fin. We would then enter the annual nominal rate as a percentage and press enter and then enter the number of compounding periods per year and press N, the divide key and then I. We then enter in 100 and press change sign, enter PV, and then FV plus. Let's take a look at an example. Calculate the effective annual interest rate assuming an annual nominal rate is six and a quarter percent and compounding occurs quarterly. So G end, F fin, 6.25, enter. 4 for 4 quarters, N divide, I, 100, change sign and enter, and then present value, and then future value, and plus. And so this will tell us that the effective rate that we're paying, given that quarterly compounding, is closer to 6.4%, even though the nominal rate is stated as 6.25%. The reverse, what is the nominal rate given a certain effective rate? So to convert effective to nominal, we will enter the number of periods per year and then press N. Then enter the value 100, press Enter and PV. Then enter the effective annual rate as a percentage and then press plus and change sign. Then FV and I and then recall n for number of periods and multiplication. Given an effective annual rate of five and a quarter, compounding quarterly, what is that nominal rate? Four and then n, 100, enter, PV, 5.25 plus and change sign, FV and then I, and then RCL, n, multiplication. And this will tell us that the nominal rate is 5.149%, again, assuming quarterly compounding. Next topic is calculating weighted averages. 
And a weighted average is simply the average of a series of values in which each quantity to be averaged is assigned a weight given how many times that quantity occurs within the data set. One way that this could come in handy is to find out the average price paid per lot for land that's being developed into houses. So the first thing that we need to understand is how to accumulate a data series or what the 12C refers to as statistics. And so we use the summation key here to enter data and store data. And these are known as the statistics registers. And so if there are values that are sitting in those statistics registers, we need to clear those out first. So the first thing we do is hit the orange F key and then the orange sigma. And in statistical calculations with one variable, when we want to enter a data point, which the calculator refers to as the X value, we'll key that value into the main display and then press the sigma key. Okay, so to calculate the weighted average of a series of values, we'll press the orange F key and then sigma, again, to clear the registers, then key in the value and press enter, then key in the weight of that value, meaning the number of times that that value appears, and press the black sigma plus key. We'll then repeat steps two and three for all additional values in the data set and then press the blue G and blue X W key and the resulting value will be the weighted average of those data points. Let's take a look at an example. A real estate broker is selling a parcel of land that has been subdivided into lots. The prices and quantities are as follows. Two of the lots are being sold for 200,000 each. Four lots are priced at 230 each and 14 lots priced at 190 and 9 lots at 290 each. What is the weighted average price per lot? Okay, so we clear the statistics registers with F and Sigma, then enter in the 200,000, enter 2, and then Sigma plus, then enter the $230,000 price, enter 4, Sigma plus, and do the same for the $190,000 and $290,000 prices, and lastly, we'll hit the blue G key and then the blue XW key. And so this will tell us, given those data points, the weighted average price of a lot is 227,241. Next topic is discounting cash flows and the net present value and internal rate of return. The net present value is the net value in today's dollars of an investment opportunity. The IRR is the average annual return on that investment as measured through the final cash flow. Applications are to value the potential acquisition of an existing property and for the IRR to determine the investment performance. First thing we need to understand is, well, how do we key in a series of cash flow streams? Let's clear the registers first, F, R, E, G, and then we'll enter in the initial investment and press change sign to specify that as a negative cash flow. And then we would press the blue G and blue CF zero keys. Okay. If the value is zero, then we'll simply enter in a zero. And the blue G key and the blue CF zero key. Then enter in the value of the next cash flow and press the change sign key if the cash flow is negative. Then press the G key and then CFJ. Again, if the cash flow amount is zero, then we would press zero and G CFJ. And then we repeat steps three and four as needed until we've entered in the entire stream of cash flows. To calculate the net present value, once those cash flows have been stored, we'll enter in the interest rate using either the I key or the blue 12 divide key, and then we press F and PV. Let's take a look at an example. An income producing property is purchased for $100,000 in cash. The asset will be held for five years 
and sold for $170,000 at the end of the hold period. The investor has projected the project cash flows as follows. We have the investment amount in year zero of negative 100,000, year one a slight loss of negative 1,000, year two positive 9,000, year three positive 11, in year four positive 8,000, and lastly, year five, where we have the sale as of the end of the year, positive 170,000. Okay, if the investor's discount rate is 13%, what is the net present value of this assumed stream of cash flows? We'll clear the registers first and then proceed with entering in all of the values. The investment amount at time zero is 100,000, change sign, G, CF zero and then we enter in this series of cash flows 1000 change sign g cfj and we do the change sign here again because this is an assumed loss in year one and then for all the positive values that are subsequent we will enter those in the amount the g and then cfj we'll then hit the recall key and n and then 13, which is the annual discount rate, and I. And lastly, the F key and the NPV key. And this will tell us that sitting here today as of time zero, given all of these assumed projected amounts and given the discount rate being applied, we as the investor perceive roughly $11,000 in value creation in today's dollars for this investment. An example for calculating the IRR, clear the financial registers first, enter in your investment amount using the same exact cash flows here, and then enter in the other subsequent cash flows, and finally hit the F key and then the IRR key. Now let's take a look at annual percentage rate calculations. APR, as it is known, is the calculated rate for a loan that accounts for the cash fees that are paid by the borrower, not just the interest payments, but the fees that go along with the origination of the loan. And the application naturally is to understand exactly what a loan is costing a borrower on an annual basis, given that they did have to pay those fee amounts. To calculate the APR, we will first calculate and enter the periodic payment amount on the loan. We'll specify the payments are occurring at the end of the period with G end. And then clear the financial registers. We'll enter the total number of payment periods and press N. Enter the periodic interest rate as a percentage and press I. Then the mortgage amount and press PV. And then the payment key to find the periodic payment amount. Then we will calculate and enter the actual net amount dispersed. Okay, so if the fees associated with the loan are stated as a percentage of the mortgage amount, we will first recall the mortgage amount using recall PV and then key in that fee rate, press the percentage key, minus sign, and then PV. If the fees are stated as a flat charge, we will recall the mortgage amount using recall and PV and then enter the fee amount and press negative PV. If the fees are stated as a percentage of the mortgage amount plus a flat charge, we recall the mortgage amount using recall PV, key in the fee rate, press percentage and then negative, and key in the fee amount and press negative PV. We then press the I key to return the interest rate per compounding period. And lastly, to return the annual nominal percentage rate, we enter the number of periods per year and press multiplication. Let's take a look at an example here. A lender charges two points to the borrower for the issuance of his mortgage. Given a mortgage of $100,000 amortized over 30 years with an annual interest rate of 6%, 
what is the true annual percentage rate, or APR, that the borrower is paying. Again, the nominal amount is 6%. We want to know the real amount that's being paid, given that there are two points up front. First, we'll specify that payments occur at the end of the period with the G and end keys, then the F fin to clear financial registers. Next, type in the number of months, which is 360, so 30, and then the blue G and the blue 12X, and then 6, G 12 divide, which is going to calculate the monthly interest rate. Next, enter in the loan amount, 100,000 PV, and now hit the PMT key, which will calculate the monthly payment. Next, hit Recall PV 2 for two points, then the percentage key, then the negative key, then PV, and this is going to tell us the actual amount that is received by the borrower. And then we hit the I key and then 12 and times. So the answer will be something naturally higher than 6% because we're now blending in the fees as part of that percentage rate. So it's 6.189%. The next topic, mortgage acquisition pricing. In the instance where a mortgage is sold, we note that typically this is done either at a discount or a premium to the remaining principal balance of that mortgage. An application of this concept is to calculate the mortgage purchase price that we would pay to achieve a certain targeted yield amount. To calculate the value of a loan that's being bought or sold at a premium, if we know the mortgage amount, the periodic payment, the timing, and the amount of the balloon payment and our desired yield, we can back solve for that price of the mortgage. We do so first by specifying payments occur at the end of each period, then F fin to clear financial registers, then enter the number of periods until the balloon payment or the prepayment occurs, and press N. Next, enter the periodic interest rate and press I. Next, enter the periodic payment amount and press PMT. Next, enter the balloon payment amount and press FV. And last, press PV to obtain the purchase price of the mortgage given all of those other inputs. Let's take a look at an example. A borrower elects to prepay his loan. The current annual interest rate is 5% with 60 monthly payments of $150 remaining and a balloon payment at the end of the fifth year of $2,000. The lender has chosen to discount the future payments at 5%. What is the amount the borrower must prepay on the note? We hit the G end keys to specify payments occurring at the end of each period. F fin to clear registers. 60 for 60 months. N. 5. G 12 divide, which is the 5%. 150 and then PMT and 2000 FV and then PV. And so this is the amount that the borrower would have to pay today to prepay that loan in full. The flip side of this equation is again when mortgages are sold instead of being held they're being sold either at a discount or a premium to the dollars that remain to be paid back. And so the application here is to calculate an expected yield amount for an assumed targeted mortgage purchase price. To do this, if we know the original mortgage amount, the interest rate, the periodic payment amount, number of periodic payments per year, and the amount of the balloon payment, we can back solve to what the yield would be for a targeted mortgage purchase price amount. We hit G end and then F fin. Next, the total number of periods prior to the balloon payment and press the end key. 
Then enter the periodic payment amount and press PMT. Next, enter the purchase price of the mortgage and press PV. Next, enter the balloon payment and press FV. Then hit the I key for the periodic yield. And then multiply by the number of periods per year, which is 12x in the case of monthly. Let's take a look at an example. Investor A purchases an amortizing loan issued for $160,000 at 8% over 30 years. 36 months of payments have already been made. If the purchase price of the mortgage is $120,000, what is the annual yield? G end, and then F fin, then 30, G 12X for the 360 payments in total, then 8, G 12 divide to get the monthly equivalent of the annual interest rate. 160,000 change sign PV, that's the initial loan amount. Hit PMT, then hit RCL and N, and then 36 minus N, and then 120,000 change sign PV, and then I for interest rate and 12 times. Okay, and so this tells us that if we were to purchase this loan at this particular time for $120,000, the remaining stream of payments to us would equal an annual yield of 11.15%. That is all for the content for the webinar. Again, we encourage you to test your skills once you have looked through the study guide and I will show you now where to find the study guide. So this is under the free tools section under shortcuts and ebooks. Here we go. Ebook HP12C calculator skills. Click here and then you can simply select add to cart and check out and it's free. There's no cost. It's 27 pages. We have it all spelled out here and again we do cover a couple of topics in the ebook that we did not cover today that are included on the test, so we encourage you to use the ebook to prepare for the test.